In order to make a collider into a trigger, we simply check the Is Trigger checkbox on the component settings in the inspector. When a collider is a trigger, things will no longer bump into it, instead they will pass through it and this can be detected via code. Similar to normal colliders, events are called when other colliders are overlapping with the trigger collider. In this example, we have a box collider with Is Trigger checked and a falling prop samaflange object. This object enters the trigger, stays as it rolls forward and then exits. To check these events, we attach a script to the trigger, which is registering on trigger enter and logging to the console, and likewise on trigger stay and on trigger exit. So if we pause the game and step through a frame at a time, looking at the console will show that the object enters the trigger, stays for a number of frames, and eventually exits the trigger. In the same way as standard collisions, one of the two objects must have a rigid body. It's standard practice to make your trigger zones a static object, i.e. not one that will be moved by the physics engine. So usually you'll make a trigger and then pass a rigid body through it. This example is no different. We're passing our rigid body object through the trigger zone and detecting when something enters that trigger. So the intention with a trigger collider, also known as a trigger zone, is that you can call code without the objects in your game physically colliding. So for example, with our hover pad, we can add a force to our samaflange to give the effect of it hovering, so long as it stays within the trigger zone. For example, we could address the object that's currently staying within the trigger, because the object that's staying is saved in a variable called other of type collider. We could then address the rigid body and add a force in the direction of vector3.up, a shortcut for up in the world. We could then multiply by a number, which we'll save as a variable. And we'll finish out the add force by choosing acceleration as the mode. Now we'll move our object over the hover pad, and we'll use freeze position to keep it in the same place, in X and Z, allowing the force of Y to create the hovering effect. And now if I press play, as you can see, as long as it stays within that area, it creates the effect of hovering without having to interact with any part of the geometry. 